Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to create a weathered graphic effect using the Surface Studio effect. So the idea to create this came out of the need for a for sale sign. I went to Google Images and said, I need to find a for sale sign. So I typed in for sale and I started looking. I said, oh, this is perfect. Uh, kind of weathered look, but the problem is, ah, you know, it's kind of cut off here. What about this one? Yeah, you know, I'm not real fond of the color there. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, 20% uh, off, you know, this is the right idea, but I, you know, it just didn't quite look the way that I wanted. And I thought, gosh, you know, I probably could just do this in uh, hit film. So I brought up hit film Pro, and I decided, you know, I think I could probably do this in the Surface Studio effect. So I said, let's create a composite shot. We'll just call this the, uh, you know, the for sale, or you can call it whatever you want. Uh, since it's going to end up being a picture graphic, I'll only make it one second. Only needs to be one second, or it could be even just down to one frame. I'm going to go ahead and make a new text file, and I'm just going to type in the words for sale. And under the text tool, I go ahead and I happen to have a font that is a stencil font. Um, let me see. It's, and it's stencil STD, actually, is what it is. Uh, and I thought, oh, I'll just kind of bring this in a little closer here. Right. And basically, yeah, that's pretty cool. Now I just want to add sort of a, an outline around it. So I, I added a new plane, made it white. Uh, or you could just use a fill color effect. If I take off the visibility of that for a second, I can grab the rectangular mask tool and just sort of draw around it uh, like that, right? And so now I have cut out, uh, you know, this square or this rectangle of the plane. And if I just take that mask and I duplicate it, but the second one, I just subtract the first one. Essentially, now I have hidden the whole thing, but if I go to the original add mask and open up the shape properties, I can just expand the add part and sort of create an outline around it like this. Okay. Now, if I go ahead and make a new point layer and I parent both of those items to the new point, then I can go ahead and maybe tip it slightly, you know, uh, to one side and I can, uh, you know, sort of reposition it uh, so that it's exactly centered in the uh, in the frame um, and then when I'm happy with everything I can just grab it all right click and say make it into its own composite shot maybe call this graphic and click OK so now in the original it's just its own composite shot from here it's very simple. I'm just going to add the Surface Studio effect to it. And pow, it's going to do its thing and make it look, uh, you know, three-dimensional in the whole nine yards. But if I open it up, the first thing I can do is remove the illumination. Instead of default lights, I'm just going to say no lights. Uh, and then the height, I can knock that down to the very lowest it can be, which is 0.1 pixels. And if I open up Surface 1, which currently is 100% of the effect here, uh, under Height Map, Bevel, I can go ahead and take the height down to 0. And I can take the size down to 0, or actually down to 1. And I can take the edge set down to 0. So now, essentially, I have one pixel added on. And that's about as close to the original as I'm going to get. I can make this any color I want. So if I want it to be red, it can be red for instance okay now i want to add the weathering effect i happen to have this picture of some tree bark here so what i'm going to do is bring this in and i'm just going to right click on it and say make it fit to frame uh and then i can go ahead and hide that i'm going to add a grade layer and put it above the tree bark and then it, under the surface studio i'm going to source the height map to that grade layer of the surface one. Now you'll notice it hasn't done anything. That's because there's not really enough contrast in the tree bark to really create that weathered look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 
brightness and contrast effect to that. And if I open it up and I just kind of crank up the contrast, you can see it's going to sort of build this weathered look to it. And I can actually do as much of that as I want. That's all the way to 100%. But if I were to duplicate that, then I could double it over and I could double it over again and so on and so forth. Right, I probably, you know, maybe I might go a little bit into the second one. I don't have to go too deep into it. Um, maybe, you know, 20 more. Something like that looks pretty good, right? But the point is, is that I very quickly and easily have created this graphic. So now I just export the frame as a PNG file. And the benefit there is, is that it actually go, uh, would go ahead and, and, and preserve the transparency of it too. If I come into the graphic and I tick off the visibility there and I bring in some different kind of a graphic, uh, then it will automatically procedurally update it, which is pretty cool. Uh, if I decide, eh, you know, I don't want it to be uh, red, maybe I want it to be blue or something, then I can very quickly change that as well. I can always uh, change the, uh, you know, the 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 weathering um for it i might um you know just uh, say rotate it 180 degrees or something like that to create something looking different the point is is that there's lots of different variations and choices that you can do and it's pretty quick and easy so if you have any questions on how to build a weathered graphic uh effect like this please leave them in the comments below otherwise thanks for watching